Welcome to the Debian Installer and Debian Images Birds of a Feather session. Steve McIntyre, I have known for a good many years. We were at college together. Steve first installed Debian in 1996 and has been doing Debian CD since I think 1999. He's been to 15 Debian conferences or so and therefore probably needs no introduction, but I decided I had to introduce him anyway. So I will pass the baton over to Steve. Right. Hey, hey everybody. Thanks for coming along. Um, this is deliberately, it's a joint session for the installer and the images team. Um, I was hoping that we might get Kibby here, but maybe, but not today. Um, we'll get him next time. Um, I do, however, have other victims, volunteers from the images team. We've got Andy and Izzy are, are both here. Um, they do a lot of work on release weekends, just the same as I do, um, going through doing testing of our images. I think we've got Andy. Uh, we probably have other people around in IRC. So, quick, I quickly want to go through um, what we're doing in the two teams, what our plans are. We are always looking for help. You'll find that, you'll hear that in a lot of teams in Debian. Um, however, main thing is this is a boff. I'm not going to talk for 45 minutes. Please, God, no, you don't want that. Um, if you have ideas, please wave for a mic and wait for the mic. Um, and we'll be taking notes in Gobby. Um, I will endeavour to do my usual thing of write up a summary document afterwards and mail it to the mailing lists so people who aren't here have a chance. So, question one, is DI still relevant? This has been an ongoing discussion for years. <coughs> um, it's a pet peeve for both Kibby and me that pe we get people coming along and saying, no, no, we don't need DI, what's that for? Um, and most people say, oh, I could do, we could do that better, and then you never hear from them again, for a start. Secondly, it is the system we have today. We, it has its issues, it has its bugs. We are absolutely aware of those issues and bugs, but it's by and large good enough. It's been around now for approaching 20 years. Um, the core architecture works quite well. We are happy with it, broadly. There are always things we'd improve. We know that UDEBs are a pain. Um, for those people who don't know, UDEBs are tiny, tiny, or micro deb, but micro packages that are specifically targeting the DI environment. So those um, will end up not, you can't rely on basically anything from a full Debian system. Your normal um, shell environment and everything is provided by BusyBox. Uh, we don't have a lot of the libraries and things that you might want to use. Um, so it, it is very restricted. Back when we first started DI, um, we were targeting systems that had a whole 32 megabytes of RAM and the, the installer needed to live in RAM. Therefore, this was a big goal. Um, it made, it, do, going this way made for a small DI, but oh my god is it difficult to develop and debug. We are well aware of this, it hurts us too. Um, we are looking at options. Now that we don't have to think about those slugs with 32 megs of RAM and the, the minimal system that you might be targeting with DI, the smallest you're going to have probably has half a gig of RAM. This is not a relevant thing for us to be optimizing for any, anymore. So we are looking at ways of making things better, easier, faster. Not faster necessarily for doing the installation, but faster for people to work with, for, also for users to drive. So we are pondering about the best way to do that. And Probably as a, as a first step, we are thinking of starting to re-implement some of DI, hollowing it out as we go, but replacing individual components with things written in Python, for example. Yeah, and and Ben, is, ben is, is enthusiastic. We know that that is likely to make life much easier for development. Um, we're also 
we, we, you know, we're not tied to the existing De Bootstrap code that we have, which is old, quite difficult to work with, and also not very fast. MM Debstrap is something that we, that we could be tempted to try. There are plenty of other options here too. Um, if you have ideas, please shout now or stick them in, stick them in Gobby. Um, we do want to improve things. We also need help to make those improvements. So, targeting Buckworm, which obviously is our next stable release and we should be looking to freeze around the end of the year. Um, in DI, we haven't been doing regular releases. Typically, that's, this is how it always goes. The first half of a new release cycle, we'd, we're busy doing other things. We don't tend to be spending much time on the installer apart from just tracking new kernel releases. Um, we do have a bunch of things to do um, to make this happen, but we'll get there. Um, the number one priority that we must do before Buckworm is fix up DebConf GTK. That has been a source of issues for now multiple releases. Um, Simon McVitie put a huge amount of effort in for us before the Bullseye release, so we actually worked with the GTK that was available at the time. We are still not on a modern GTK, and this causes the GNOME team hassle, it causes the release team hassle. We have components in DI that nobody else wants or wants to touch. We need to fix this. Um, so that's something that we want to do. I think the VTE, the virtual terminal emulator that we rely on, is a key component here. Um, it's been abandoned for more years than I care to think about. Now, on an installed system, that would be horrendous for security and everything. Obviously, in the installer, that's less of an issue, but it's still, we don't want to be, you know, dragging our heels and holding other people up. Um, so, let's see. We're looking at improvements. Um, I can say we, we, Python is one of the things we're thinking of. The, the, the big issue that we all have with DI, especially those of us who've ever done any work with this, is Partman. Um, it's amazing it works at all considering the features that it enables and the options. If you've ever looked, hands up anyone here who's actually ever dug into Partman to say add support for a new file system or debug something. Hands up, what, keep your hands up if it was an enjoyable experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite. Um, it's, it, again, it, it's, it, it, it's architecture is a, is a part of the issue here. It works really well on a tiny system but it means that it's really difficult to do, so, to do even vaguely clever things. We have guided recipes. Yes, Ben, can we get a mic? I uh, just wanted to say that I, I, want, I wanted to add a part man B cache and I just haven't because yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Sure. Um, we want to have better guided recipes. At the moment, we have fun things where, of course, Parkman doesn't know what type of system you're on, doesn't know what you're going to be installing. So we'll set you up with, with um, on it, particularly, say, VM images and whatever, we'll set you up with file system sizes that don't actually work very well for what you want because it's guessing as a default that you're going to be doing a desktop, for example. Um, that really doesn't work very well. We'd like to make things better plugged together. We want to put more intelligence in. Um, a really common thing that people are now doing, for example, uh, because we're now in the space year 2022, is people want to have to, want to install on UEFI systems. They also don't want to those systems to die if the boot disk dies, so they want to be able to use uh, Grub EFI with software RAID. We have no current way of doing this sensibly from DI without you having to fight with it. And actually plumbing it into our existing architecture is really, really hard. I've done it, I've tried a couple of times and it just, ah, no, it's not happening. Um, having more intelligence and something that can actually track things, can keep state in a single partner application here would be a really big win. Um, Finally, we have had a suggestion from a guy called Nick Black that he could help here with, with 
a library for partitioning and file system setup called Growlight. Um, we're hoping that he's still enthusiastic and would like to work with us. Um, we're going we're to prod him again. If not, we may look at this anyway. Um, again, I'm going to sound like a st stuck record. Volunteers would be very welcome to help here. Um, other things that Kibby and I have been planning on is adding backports support. We've done bits and pieces of this, so we would love to make DI images that can, can do automatically what people have done by hand before, which is say, add a backports kernel, add backported firmware, add backported graphics drivers, and so on. So we'd like to get these out automatically. So say, for, you know, on a monthly basis, as well as having our DI releases, we could also have a DI backports release to go on stable. Wouldn't that be nice? We've been running out of time to do it. I've been, sorry, oh. I've, I lean over Steve. I've been talking about, um, poten sorry, I've been talking about potentially using uh, OpenQA to look at this for a while and I've just run out a spoon, so I haven't picked it up. I know Phil Hans uh, suggested it some time back that we look at uh, that as well, and I believe Roland is suggesting it as well. Yes. Okay. Off. So, also, the other thing, and again, this is a, a, an ongoing topic this week, firmware. Before, just before the bullseye release, we had to do a, a, a bunch of work in DI to, make, to enable better firmware support. So, for example, you could actually run DI on your new laptop. You could have audio so you could install it if you were blind, that kind of thing. Um, along with the other changes, and I'm going to do the, of course, I'm going to do the selfish thing and plug my next session at the end of the week about firmware, there will be changes needed here to go with that. Um, I can go into more details in a minute if people want. So, moving on to the images. Does anybody have questions about DI? We can come back again, but if you have anything specific, now is good. No. So, the images. This is installer images to start with. We ha currently have a netinst size image, which is just DI and the bits it needs to install the base system. You know, which is give or take single CD sized, and we have a full DVD set available for every one of our architectures. Um, we used to have CDs, so you could have a single CD that would install one of the light desktops. We just can't make them fit anymore. And it's if you actually if you if you have any kind of useful net connection, grab the NetInst. It's faster to do that than it is to mess around downloading all the bits onto a USB stick, or God forbid, writing it to a CD, take, or DVD, take the small image and grab everything else. If you do want a complete set of Debian, and I know a lot of people still do from time to time, we do have a full DVD set available. Um, we are up to, if I remember correctly, it's like 17 DVDs for AMD64, i386. This, this is not useful for most people. Do the first couple at most. Um, also, for x86, we have 16 gig USB sized images, we have Blu ray sized images, and in a fit of enthusiasm a few years ago, I added dual layer Blu ray images. For a while, you could actually have a complete Debian for one of, the, for one of these two architectures on a single disk. These days, it's too big and we don't do it. We do have people who ask periodically. It's typically one or two people, which is why we haven't done it, asking, can we have a quad-layer Blu-ray size image, you know, or a 128-gig USB you know, um, size image with everything in? It's genuinely a, it's a ridiculously silly thing to do. By the time you've written a large image to that USB stick, you'll, you will actually, you'll never use all of it. If you want to get all of Debian like that, just go and run a mirror and run a net, use a NetInst for installation. It'll be faster, massively faster. It will be less hassle for you in the long run. Um, we don't want to be building every possible combination of every image size because that just takes more time on the build. It takes more time on test. And it adds more confusion to, to end users. We still have people every now and again coming along saying, I've just written DVD2 to a USB stick and it doesn't boot. What have I done wrong? 
we don't want to give people too many choices which will just cause confusion like that. Now, the next point follows on from that. Each of our most common three architectures, so AMD64, i386 and ARM64, are designed as what we call iso-hybrid images. Who in the room knows what that means? Okay, cool, some people do. Basically, you can literally wipe that image to, to optical media and it will work, or you can just DD it or copy it to a raw USB stick, not onto the file system, you just copy it raw, and it will do the right thing. Um, again, this is a nice user feature. Apparently, other distros haven't done this or used to. We still get people coming in and asking the question of, how do I write this ISO image to a USB stick? Do I need a special tool? And the answer is, no, you really don't. It just works. Um, we would rather people don't try and use special tools because they often end up playing with the contents of the image. And then we get to find the bugs when users report problems. Um, Ben. Except you are going to need a special tool on, on Windows, presumably. We do need a special tool on Windows, yes. Uh, we recommend sure. Rufus, uh, Pete Batard, the guy who maintains it. It's really good free software. He's an awesome guy who knows what he's doing. Uh, we like him a lot. Um, thanks, for, thanks for checking. Um, we also currently have, obviously, live images for at the moment, only the x86 architectures, and we have a separate image for each desktop that Debian supports. We also have a standard image, which is text only. These also support installation, um, and they're also ISO hybrid again, so you do exactly the same thing. You write, write it direct to a USB stick. No, approximately nobody. I will say, uses optical media anymore, but I know I'll get shouted at because there's always someone. Um, we produce a final image. <laughs> no, Andy, we are not going to produce a final image. <laughs> um, so that's where we are today with Stable. For Bookworm, um, I am very firmly of the, the opinion that it's time to stop producing images that encourage people to install i386. We should keep the i386 architecture for people who still have old 32-bit binaries they need to run. So you can add it as a second architecture, or you can continue to maintain your existing systems. But it's basically been impossible to buy an i386-only machine for over a decade, probably longer than that by now. The fact that we have an i386 image means that some people end up installing the wrong thing. And this is very much the wrong thing to install on a modern machine. Um, if you have a really, really old i386 only system, to be honest, retire it. Go and pick a better AMD64 system out of, out of the trash. It will be more powerful and more power efficient. Running old machines for the sake of running them is doing the world a disservice. Um, I mentioned earlier people have been asking about larger images. We don't, we, we, we're not going to produce them officially for the reasons I mentioned earlier. However, um, Thomas Schmidt, who is famous as the guy who maintains Zorizo and uh, CD Burn and a whole bunch of other really good tooling around reading and writing ISO images and everything, in off his own bat a few weeks ago said, I'm going to write a tool that will merge a set of Debian ISOs and give you a bigger one. And, and it works. We're going to be shipping this um, in Bookworm. I just need to get, get on with packaging this, probably in the Debian CD package. Um, the thing we don't currently have in Bookworm is live images. Um, we desperately need to get people to do this work. I made a point of saying for several releases, I am not going to do live anymore. And eventually, I, I turned them off because I, I don't want to be responsible for them. Um, we do have a couple of people who are interested. So this should be a thing for Bookworm. But we need more than just a couple. Ideally, what we want is the live images that we ship should be a good representative example of, for example, each of the desktops. You know, we want the GNOME Live image 
to be something that the GNOME team would be happy to use, for example, and not just something that looks approximately white but is missing half their packages, that kind of thing. We should really get a proper buy-in from all of the desktop teams as well as whoever's going to build these. Yes, Thomas. I think it's not important to have the live image, images for all desktops. It would be a very good start if we have one live image with the Calamaras installer mm -hmm. with our default desktop. So sometimes in Debian we, we like to do things then for all desktops, for our architectures, sure. but mm -hmm. I think we should really concentrate uh, or it's enough if we have a live image for a major desktop, that's fine. And yep. do not just don't ship it because we don't have all desktops. Oh, definitely. My own preference for this, although I've, I, as I said, I've explicitly disavowed interest in this, would be if we don't have buy-in from a desktop team, then we don't, we don't ship that desktop as a live image. Um, that would be a way of making sure that only, good, only the good ones, only the ones that are ready, will actually ship. Um, that's a discussion I'd like to have. Let's see how it goes. And guess what? You might spot the last point here. We're going to have to make changes here for firmware again. Um, we'd, please come to the mess session on Sunday if you can, or, or watch the video. There's more stuff to talk about there. So. We also have, yes, Thomas. So maybe you can go back to the, the current images we have. So yes. you, you said these are the current images we have. And um, I'm not sure, do you want to drop the DVD and Blu-ray disc and uh, things? Or w will you like to keep them? I'm happy to keep these for now. Um, I'm all, we always are ready to reevaluate what people want and what people use. Um, to go with the firmware talk, I, I w that will also help us um, think about which images we, we want to be reproducing. Um, for most people, the first DVD is the right choice. It's in fact deliberately downsized, so it's a four gig image. It will fit on give or take any USB stick you have. So, so the DVD image is also an ISO hybrid of image that you can put all on of them USB are, yes. stick. Yes. So, so it's it's not a different one. So, so as I understand, we have ISO hybrid images f for multiple architecture Absolutely. that can be put a, a burp band on a DVD or a USB stick, so, so it's, Correct. it's more like one yeah. image. Yes. Okay. So the point of the DVD set is for those people who might need to have an offline copy of Debian. For the people for, you know, who may not have a good net connection or may need to install on an air gap system, and that's where you, would, where you would want the bigger set. The larger images, to be honest, the Blu-ray images, we get very few downloads already. Um, so, that, so we only ship those as jig do. We don't ship full ISOs. We don't want people grabbing a 25 gigabyte file from one, from one of our systems. It, it, it's not a good thing for anyone. Okay. Again, the, the, the people that want the whole of the, uh, the archive to be able to install a mirror is more often than not the right answer. If you want yeah. the whole thing offline, um, and you want, instead of a dozen DVDs or Blu-rays, just download a mirror and run it locally. Mm. Leave this one. Uh, yeah. So, we do have other images. I've concentrated so far on the ones that the installer and the images team have been working on. Gunnar, in particular, has done a load of work on Raspberry Pi images. Those are available from the same official uh, Debian CD image or images.debian.org or whatever you look, however you reference it, they're available on the same site. Um, we have um, Windows Syst support for Linux is WS? Subsystem for Linux, thanks Ben. Um, all images are also available, but these are not yet official. Um, we'd love to, to start pulling some of these in and, you know, and do the same level of QA and everything. In the past, we've had blends images available. 
um, particularly blends live images. We'd like to do more to support the blends people here. Um, Debbie and Edu is the, the only one that we really do much with. They are incredibly enthusiastic and typically every release weekend one of the Debbie and Edu people turns up, uh, Wolfgang, and he does a load of testing alongside us and tells us, yeah, that, that, that works, it's good to go. It's great to work with people like that. Yeah. Um, we have had people ask for how can we help derivatives in the past. That's kind of an unanswered question. Um, we're, we're more targeting what we do want for Debian directly so far, but of course we can help give advice and help. Um, and finally, testing is always the thing. As Andy mentioned earlier, Phil Hands has been do doing a lot of work on OpenQA to, to add automation on testing. Automation is good because automation means we don't have to do it by hand. We still end up doing a bunch of manual installation testing on release days to verify, not necessarily to say we're not going to ship that release, but so we at least can, we know what the bugs are going to be so we can warn people. Um, we do test obviously with the DI betas and everything coming up, so we don't expect surprises on a release day, but occasionally it happens. So, I have just wibbled at you for about 25 minutes. What else would people like, 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 to, like us to do? What else do people want to help us do? Um, I think one very important thing is also the download side. Yeah. And uh, since I'm a member of the web team, uh, we hired an external uh, people that will help us uh, do a new download page. And I think you know that the discussion is uh, how prominent will we present which image, which should be the default image. And uh, I'm not sure if it really fits here, um, but um, since several years, I think um, the Debian install is very good. It's good for people with some technical background. Um, but I would say most users of Debian are end users who use the desktop. And they like to have a very simple installer with less questions with no technical questions and that's why I promote since several years uh, the Calamares installer with a live CD uh, on a live CD and uh, mm. I think in, in, in my opinion is that we should present um, a live CD with the Calamares installer and the net installer as the, the two major images for two different, um, yeah, for the two and paths, users, yeah. Yeah. user things. That's a, so, so absolutely. that um, I, I really like to have this in Bookworm, a new download page where I'm mm. working on, and uh, the selection of two um, major ISO images. Uh, yeah. Different question. I'm wondering whether people are interested to use the installer with local mirrors. And basically any network I am, I have a local mirror and it would be awesome if the installer would automatically select that. We do have mechanisms in the archive to do that via Avahi already. Is that an option adding that? Yes, I'm sure we could. Um, so obviously, if, when we're doing release testing, I have a full mirror at home and I want to make the most of that, but it's not going to pick up on it automatically. Yes, adding that automatic detection of a local mirror, yes, would be a good call. Um, patches would be really welcome. I think it boils down to installing one package in the installer, which makes it automatically work uh, by looking it up in Avahi. Okay, sure. Well, it'll need some in, a li little bit of integration, yes. Um, if that's something you'd like, please, please do it. <laughs> but again, of course, sorry, this also goes back to previously in DI, we've tried to keep the, the, the DI system itself as minimal as possible. Just installing Avahi, of course, there will be extra libraries and that kind of thing. We are now looking at, you know, we're opening up to make that kind of thing much, much easier to do. Um, 
Now is the perfect time also to remove things. You mentioned the dropping the i386 installer and yeah. it brought uh, scary memories back from when we had multi-arch detection on the multi-arch images that we can then remove. Yeah. And I think one thing that might be worth discussing as well is the Win32 loader, which is this XA mm. uh, Microsoft ah, executable yes. that we and have the, on CDs. This is, this is your package. Well, no, it's not anymore. <laughs> I opened it. <laughs> but maybe it should be removed yeah. uh, because that it was really useful on Windows XP and probably up to Windows 7 to install. To basically, what it does is that it allows from Windows to get you uh, into DI on the next boot by tweaking the Windows bootloader. Mm. But now with Secret Boot, that's most, most likely not, yeah. la not working. So we should th that's among the things that could just be removed. Sure, yeah. Please propose that yeah. on, on, on the mailing list as well, yeah. So I have a question, maybe you have the answer already. Uh, I used to do a mirror of the Debian CD and it's huge. Yeah. And on every release, then my server was broken because too much space. And I wonder if there's a solution either for me to do that better, like having only the latest point release of every stable and all stable and all stable. Sure. That's probably the, your best bet is to just mirror the current stable if you want to mirror. But I mean, how can I do that? So if you just mirror the slash release directory from cdimage.debian.org, that is just the current point release, current stable. Okay, so just asking that. Yes. Um, in fact, if you want to go even better, you do, um, Matthias Radenstein Maswan, who runs uh, Peterson and the, the, you know, the stuff in Umea where we post things, has a set of scripts for mirror people, so you don't have to download all the ISOs, you can generate them using Jigdo, and it's much faster and much less ba bandwidth. Um, for, 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 sorry, for a helmet, um, there's the script called apt auto proxy. The maintainer for that is here at DebConf. So if you ask him to make a UDEB for that, that could be used in Debian installer as well. Although maybe we don't need UDEBs going forward, of course. <laughs> yes. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, so yes. two things. So I was interested in your testing piece, because that's something I would like to help with awesome. if I can. So I want to know who to talk to. So. Um, okay. And I don't have a bad so somebody please tell me or send me an email or something. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you more. Because, uh, and I'd be genuinely fascinated mm. to know what you use for testing, because that's okay. something we yeah. want to do. Well, I can explain right now. Sure. So Phil is working on OpenQA, which is a system that runs things in a VM and actually checks for um, or compares what gets displayed on each screen of DI against what's expected and will throw errors if it's beyond a certain amount of change. So even things like a font change or something will, will, so, you know, will, get, will show up as a problem. When we do release testing on release weekend, we have typically, we're running in VMs and we're just driving the installer manually, mm -hmm. but we have a set of test cases that we've worked out. We also have a stack of old ThinkPads basically sat around. <laughs> I've got a few of those. <laughs> well, quite. Um, because oddly, they're the machines that we've been using for years and we've just replaced the SSDs in them, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and that's what we often do. We do end up with some fun and games sometimes trying to make those work. And of course, we're always off the, off the trailing edge. Um, and, and that's going to be one of the things, because so, I'm interested in testing on bare metal to find yeah. out where the problems are and hopefully catching things earlier. Sure. Um, the other thing, just, just as a note comment, and so a lot of these don't have Ethernet ports nowadays. Yes. Which I know is frustrating. And I yes. know that links into firmware. I'm not going to be here for your talk, sadly, but I yeah. would love to have a discussion with you about, I know installing mm. is hard without that IWR yeah. Wi-Fi. You have dongles, but you've sure. got dongles. So just uh, yeah. one Definitely. of those things I'd love to have a discussion with. Not necessarily now. But. Of course. Yeah, back to the bare metal. Um, yes, we, we do do tests and run tests on bare metal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be the more complicated tests. So Izzy, for the last three or four releases, has been doing a lot of the speech-only install tests to confirm uh, the accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> many releases. Many, many <laughs> releases. I mean, she could drive it, with, well, I would say with her eyes closed, but that's taking the mickey. Yeah. Um, but we also do uh, a series of tests uh, with Wi-Fi and bits and pieces where we don't need specific firmware. 
Um, but yes, the vast majority are in VMs. Um, and, yeah. and it's hard to check that your graphics are working. How do you touch touch is working? How do you, yeah, well, that's, I, know, I know that's hard. Mm. I'm looking at how we solve that and... Yep. Yep. And we have a, we have a, we have a simple, small hardware far, farm and just test against, but yes. it's only if, known if hardware. We, if we could make that hardware farm bigger, yeah, I'd love to talk to you about that. Yeah, <coughs> and cool. I think, cool. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right. Switching to topic entirely, uh, a few of us have tried rebuilding the Debian installer under libc6. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, again, that's one of the things we're going to have to do. Um, the UC libc that we use at the moment is not going to be... I, I would be very surprised if that will support... Um, any of the more complicated packages that we're, we're going to be expecting. So we're going to end up rebuilding it. DI is going to become much more like a normal, de more normal Debian system, just with a limited set of packages. And then we can get rid of the UDEBs and... Uh, and it, eventually. Put it on the we're going, to, we're going to work through it. it you know, we're not gonna, it's not going to be a big bang. If you remember when we started uh, the Debian installer project, it literally was took like about three years from start to finish. It may take a similar amount of time to go through. We're not, we don't have the manpower of what, you know. If anyone wants to volunteer to help with that, it'll go faster, of course. So, as I said, a few of us tried, me yeah. included, and then, oh, there's so many packages, and then mm. I gave up. Yeah. Um, it, we'll get there. So. There, there, there's a question or a remark on IRC uh, from Phil. One of his um, motivations to work on the open QA, QA thing was to uh, enable the plans and the task cell. So maybe it's good yes. to take that into account if that wasn't sure. So one of the, th the fun things that we had, you know, I mentioned blends. I am embarrassed to say that we don't support the blends team very well here still. There was an, on there was an ongoing piece of work which still hasn't been finished to make it more feasible for DI to actually to show more, lots and lots more tasks in the installer. So you could install a blend easily. So you could even have your own slightly custom image that just passed a list of blends you wanted installing. Um, people here know what blends are, I hope. I'm seeing mostly nods. So you could have your scientific workstation that basically is pre-installed with the right packages or a similar kind of thing. When the Blends team first added support for this in the existing task cell package, it ended up swamping everything. You had a, just a, set, a choice of desktop at the top three, four, five packages, or tasks rather, and then 150 or so blends, which made it really impossible for a normal user to deal with. Task cell and DevConf stuff it uses are really, really old bits of software. I started hacking on them, and, and to be honest, after a few months of banging my head against a brick wall, I, I abandoned, and I, I apologize for that. One of the things that it would be lovely to do, again, as part of a bigger DI with more options, is to have potentially a second equivalent of task cell that doesn't have to be written using the same really old technology where you could possibly pick a, oh, well, now you want a load of blends and, you know, with more information about them. We'll see how it goes. Um, Gunnar, do you want to tell us more about Raspberry Pi images? <laughs> yes, I will put you on, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, well, there, I know there's not uh, much new things to say uh, since we last met in Brazil. I mean, mm. the, the thing is, uh, yeah, I'm uh, building new images every day. Uh, it's being done, well, uh, reliably. Uh, uh, I still mark them as non-official because they include firmware. If everything goes your way, then they will become official and they will be very happy. Yay. Uh, uh, I'm currently building uh, uh, like uh, for stable and uh, testing releases. 
Uh, I'm building on my machine and uh, uh, uploading uh, uh, by RSync to, to CDI, CDI mesh. Mm. So it's being served from Debian infrastructure. Uh, but I, I, I would be happy, one of my reasons to come here was to remember to tell you that I, I want to work on building on, uh, on Debian hardware so I can, uh, it, it's no longer my image, but some, somebody who happens to be me really yeah. runs it. Sure. Cool. Uh, a few weeks ago, a student bought me a, a brand new Dell laptop that uh, in the BIOS you could, you could set a URL to boot to an HTTP site and then it would boot whatever is there. I, I want to know, if, has anyone made that work or played with that yet? Because I kind of like the idea that I can just connect to a network, enter a URL in my BIOS, and don't have to write any installation media at all, so... Um. Yeah, HTTPS boot is a, th is a thing. I don't know. We haven't done anything, however, yet to, work to really support it. So many BIOS, many network cards can support that, and you just need the HTTP to do it for you. So you yeah. configure the HTTP to do... Uh, okay, so I had a question for Gunnar as well. So I, I tried very hard to have description with the Raspberry Pi images and failed. And I think it'd be, if, if I had DI, and then it would have probably been easier for me to do it. I completely agree with you. I mean, what, what uh, I set uh, out to do, I mean, I adopted the Raspi image after it was uh, basically orphaned, and it's meant to replace the, the usual Raspberry Pi installation media. I mean, uh, those kinds of computers, you usually don't install an operating system, but you get uh, a live image, and uh, that's what uh, I make. And uh, yeah, it doesn't, my installation doesn't support uh, 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 encrypted images. Of course, I, I could tell you, well, uh, install a, uh, an encrypted image to a secondary disk and then swap it for the SD and uh, yeah, you will hate me. You already hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible. Everybody loves you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, and well, I, I, I was uh, thinking, as, uh, as you were saying before, on, on live images. I think the, the infrastructure I am using could be easily adapted to create live images with a, 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 with a C, a, a, I, I just forgot the name, sorry, mm. a, a, a VMDB2, that's mm. a Lars uh, imager, a, to, to prepare live images for AMD64 machines as well. I haven't done it, I, I'm not offering to make it r right away, but I think that could be a good way to produce live images as well. There were about 15 different system, but you know, all, you know image building of tools course. out there. Even, 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 have done it even almost as many competing for Bookworm, but you yes. can join the club. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that actually I would like to mention as a, as a bit of a side topic, but um, the thing we don't have at the moment is what I can, would describe as an OEM image. For things like a live image um, or a Raspberry Pi image that you, you, know, you DD to an it's a disk or whatever, um, on first boot, the GNOME desktop has its own um, first boot tool that takes you through as a user setting things up. We don't have that for the rest of the system as a whole. So everyone ends up, for example, if you have a live image that has SSH enabled, one of the things you have to do is go, you have to go and clear a whole load of random state from your image at the end of the installation so it will get generated on first boot. We don't have that in infrastructure in general in our packaging, and I think we should. Ben? Uh, doesn't SystemD have first boot? Uh, stuff? Yes, it does, but we're not using it. Yeah. Um, it could do it for us, but we need to plug in. We actually should make sure that our packaging of, package of things that need it should be set up appropriately. But that's a much wider topic. I like to ask what's the current status of the scripts for building live ISOs? So I know you, you, you currently you do not. Uh, build them daily or weekly yeah. and I heard is it because of Python 2 or so the old script that we use for generating and I've got one minute for generating the existing bullseye images are using a whole set using a buster VM with old Python 2 stuff in it 
We continue to maintain that. We don't, one of the reasons we don't do bookworm is because that software is no longer available and is not in the archive. One of the things we are looking for is people to move forward to new tooling, which is probably going to be live build, could be VMDB2, could be something else. This is one of the reasons why we don't have current testing live images. Okay, and one question, um, John Johnson, because I think you are the maintainer of Calamares. Uh, what is the status there, do you think? Um, it's fine for Bookworm release to produce live images with the Calamares installer? Yep. <laughs> Very great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're at, at time, basically, but yeah, I can tell you the longer version as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we are out of time. We'll get murdered if we carry on much longer. Thank you, everybody. I hope that was useful and interesting. Please talk to us again afterwards if you want, if you want to help. Thanks, folks.